everybody, welcome to Daily IoT. This is the second time I filmed this because the first time I forgot to turn the microphone on. So welcome to today's episode. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna try and get this LED strip lit up, connected to our electron. And so I wanna talk about that a little bit. The first step in doing that is getting five volts. I know that this particular LED strip requires five volts, a maximum of six volts. Um, because I've used it before, but if you haven't used something before, you always want to check the data sheet. Look up, make sure that you're powering it correctly. That's a great way to burn things out. If you think it's uh, a five volt thing, it's actually 3.3, you put five volts on it and you release the magic smoke. You don't want to do that, so always check the data sheet first. This one I know requires five volts. And you would think with all this electronic stuff I have lying around, I'd have a five volt wall wart or voltage regulator or something, but I don't. In one of my very first videos way back in the day, I made a homemade power supply out of a five volt wall wart, uh, wall wart, however you pronounce it, um, that I apparently lost or threw away because I don't have it anymore. And so I've got this nice 12 volt battery that I could step down to five volts if I had a five volt voltage regulator, which I do not. I have 3.3 and 12 volt regulators, no five volt regulators, go figure. And so, we gotta come up with another solution, which is this. I've got this handy connector from Adafruit. <clears throat> it's a barrel jack on this end, breaks it out into alligator clips on this end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in a wall wart that I do have, which is nine volts, break out nine volts to these, and then I have this DC to DC regulator. I have another one uh, than the one that we stuck in the scooter. And this thing, this thing stinks. I ordered it off of eBay, it came from China, and I am not 100%, I can't say with certainty that this thing is not toxic. Uh, I wash my hands every time after touching it because it just has a, a nasty smell to it. So it says I can put 12 or 24 volts in and get five volts out. I'm guessing with the regulation in there that I could probably stick nine volts in and get five volts out. So that's what we're going to try. If that doesn't work, I might need to run to the Goodwill or something to find a wall wart that does do five volts so I can hack it apart. But uh, that's step one. We're going to power this thing so that we can connect it up to an electron and hopefully by the end of today's episode we will have some light action on the LED strip. We want to test it out here in the office before we go out into the 150 degrees garage and try and play with it out there. So get everything working down here then we'll go up and attach it to the scooter maybe tomorrow um, or the next day and get everything working. So that's what we're going to work on today. We got nine volts coming in here into the DC to DC converter, and we have five volts coming out. When I touch it, sometimes it goes up to five. Five volts, so we're good to go. So now that we have five volts, I need to wire it up. I have the strip already broken out into a nice little uh, clip here. I'm gonna just use jumper wires to get that to a breadboard, connect these up to a breadboard, and we should be powered. I can hook up the signal, and then we start writing firmware. So we're making good progress. So what's really cool about the particle ecosystem is you have options, there's the old spark core, there's the particle photon, there's the particle electron, there's the red bear duo. Uh, all of these boards are supported in the particle ecosystem. Now, why that's interesting is we wanna use an electron for the scooter project. However, the electron uses cellular data. So to update it over the air, you're using up your cellular, cellular data, which you have to pay for. Otherwise you have to have it plugged into your laptop to flash it to upload new firmware which is fine my laptop's right over here but my bench is right here in front of us where i've got my power supply hooked up and everything where i want to set everything up so what's cool is that i can just take this particle photon which uses wi-fi it'll update firmware over wi-fi over the cloud through the cloud um, so we can dev on this write the same code in our development environment and then just when it's time we could switch it over to use the electron because the code is just the same. If all goes right, if we come over here, it's just off screen. Once I plug this in, our photon should light up. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's not good. We should be getting some photon turning on there. Hmm. Well, we can check our voltages. And plugged in and we're not getting anything. No voltage. Make sure we're still getting nine volts. Nine volts in. Welp. Cheap, stinky, toxic DC to DC converter from China. 
appears to have gone belly up. I put my 12 volt battery on it. I get nothing on the output side. I put my nine volt in. I get nothing on the output side. I was getting five volts earlier. You saw it in the video, but now it's garbage. So about what I expected from a $5 DC to DC converter that I bought on eBay from China. So um, we gotta find another way to get five volts. All right, I've got an idea. Uh, I had a project from long ago that I had parts for out in the garage that I went and found and I have these little mini USB connectors there mini B receptacles and then I think I have a B to A cable so the idea is I've got these chargers everywhere USB to uh, wall chargers that put out five volts and I've got a USB A to B cable over in the closet and so if I just solder up some wires to this to come off five volt and ground and ignore the data lines, I'll put some shrink wrap on it. And then all I need is USB cable and I can plug it into any one of my phone char or tablet chargers and be able to get five volts out. Let's see if this works. It worked. I got my iPhone charger, USB cable coming down into my mini receptacle that I soldered some wires onto, real tight soldering. The pins are really small, so I'm worried about current consumption, but the data sheet says it can do one amp. Uh, for this little teeny test strip, I think we'll be okay. But uh, anytime I need five volts now, just use my iPhone charger. Sweet. Now that we've solved our power issue, we're a little bit behind schedule, but it's time to start writing some code I've got the Photon powered up and ready to accept new firmware. We just need to write some new firmware. So I'm gonna use the particle dev environment. You could use the particle build online environment for this, but I wanna share this on GitHub when I'm done. So it's easier to share code when you have it as a local project here. So we will just create a new project, start a new project, there we go. We will call this scooter and we'll create it. All right, it gives us a readme, which we don't really care about. Library management, we don't care about. Close untitled. And we'll open up Scooter. Okay, so we have a clean slate program here. Nothing written. Time to add some code to it. Now, if we go back to the data sheet on this, there's not a lot in here. It just says that we've got a clock and data pin somewhere on it there we go data is yellow clock is green but not a whole lot about how it works and so figuring out the protocol you got to search around and find it however the first thing i suggest you doing when you're doing these projects and you're trying to interface with something this is the lpd 8806 addressable led strip so i'm just going to copy that lpd 8806 come into particle dev and see if there is a library that somebody has already written and contributed in the community. So I'm gonna browse and manage particle libraries, search libraries, I'm gonna just paste that in. <laughs> Look at that, LPD8806, Arduino library for LED strips and pixels using the LPD8806 and probably 8803 and 809. I'm not sure exactly which model I have. I think it's the 8806, but now we're just gonna click use and add to current project. Um, add to current project, so there's a difference here. You see add to current project and copy to current project. Add to current project downloads it into like a global thing. This would be kind of like an NPM install global and then just adding a reference to your project. Copy to current project brings it down and actually puts the files in your project. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna say copy to current. You're gonna get a couple messages here about it's checking, installing, and 
You'll see I got a new lib folder up here that has the LPD 8806 in it. And that's it. I've pulled up the code on Adafruit, the Adafruit uh, repository here for the 8806 to see how to use it. The examples here are intact. So let's do strand test to start with. So we'll take this. Take all of this. We don't need any of this stuff. And test it with that. Color chase. Just copying code here. I mean, this is the great part about people contributing to the community. The code's already written, and you just get to inherit it. Let's do a red color chase in the loop, and then just delay a little bit between it. Delay for, I don't know, two seconds. Okay, so I think we've got everything here. I mean, best case scenario right now, I'm gonna hit verify and it's gonna compile and everything's gonna work just fine. That rarely happens, but let's see. No such file or directory, LPD 806. After playing around with it a bit, I had to delete the folder that was underneath source. There was no need for that. That must have been from an old pre-version 2.0 of the particle libraries. So we fixed that back over in scooter.ino. I had a couple of things. The person who ported this from Arduino world into the particle world lowercased everything so the header file is lowercase the lpd8806 object is lowercase versus uppercase so i had to fix that uh, the number of leds i had to put in because i don't have a variable for it and that was it i'm just doing a color chase with red and it's working like a champ well it's working almost like a champ you can see the LEDs going around, except it doesn't finish all the way out to the end of the strip. It stops before it gets to the end. I've got the right number of LEDs put in there, so I don't know if that's a library problem or not, but I'd say this is a pretty good first stab at getting the LED strip working. All right, that's where we're gonna wrap it up for today. We had a little bit of a setback with the power issue, but I'm really happy with how that worked out. I now have a USB uh, five volt power source. I could plug that into my laptop and get five volts if I wanted to and stick it right out onto my breadboard, plug it into my iPhone charger into the wall. Uh, really happy with it. The strip doesn't go all the way out to the end. I'm not sure if that's a problem with the person who ported the uh, library from Arduino land over to Particle. Might have done something weird where it's not refreshing all the way to the end of the strip but I'm not worried about that I can fix that and deal with that I'm I think we're in a great spot now to we can shift this over to the electron that's probably what I'll work on tomorrow and uh, I think we're getting pretty close to having LED lights on the scooter so I'm pretty excited about that I appreciate everybody watching please feedback comments anything say hey down in the comments I love hearing from people thanks so much for watching daily IOT the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time